What you are seeing going on in the Jor Jordan Peterson Sam Harris debates is quite simply revolutionary. I promise. I promise. And, and it's impossible to understand the full dimensions of the revolution you are seeing unfold in front of your very eyes. Ever since Darwin, the secular world has been encroaching against the power and the authority of religion because Darwin seemingly undermined the, the faith claims of the Bible. But now we have somebody defending religion, using the tools of secular society, using secular tools, not defending the religion based on the faith claims. He's moved the bar forever and always. And it doesn't matter if he does it all that successfully. If, if you go watch the Peterson Sam Harrison debate, he's doing it pretty successfully and pretty easily. And he's using, he's defending religion, Christianity in particular, using the tools of secular society, rational thinking, sociological evidence, psychological evidence. The same tools that have been undermining the authority of religion and the centrality of religion in people's lives since Darwin, basically. I mean, it's been going on since before Darwin, since, since the Enlightenment. That's revolutionary. Why? Look for, because you, you take those charts that you keep showing me of religion on the wane and, you know, religion, all, everyone's becoming a non. Throw them out. Because what you are seeing with your own eyes is religion powerfully reasserting itself in a way that cannot be denied. Heretofore, the reason why Christians get killed in these debates with the atheists is because we have been trying to defend faith claims of Christianity. That's literally almost impossible to do. It's literally almost impossible to do. I said this before when I first started making these videos. Christianity is not the most plausible of world religions. It's one of the least plausible. In order for you to accept the faith claims of Christianity, you have to have a faith experience. You yourself have to have a supernatural experience. There's no way on earth I can give that to you. Therefore, I can tell you Jesus rose from the dead as much as I want. There's no reason on earth for you to believe me. Period. None. Until you have the faith experience for yourself. There's no reason for you to believe that. Right? Right. In order to, you say it yourself. Supernatural claims, or no, what is, what's, the, what's the thing you're always saying? One of the things you're always, you're always saying all this crazy stuff. This is one of the ones that actually makes sense. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Okay, Jesus rose from the dead. That's an extraordinary claim. Really hard to defend intellectually. That's why Christians get killed in these debates, because they are trying to defend the faith claims of Christianity. Jordan Peterson is defending the truth claims of Christianity. That's a very different ball game. It's a game changer. It's really easy to do. He's doing it successfully. Yeah, he might be losing a round here, or making dumb points here, but he's doing it successfully. 250,000 people are watching him do it. And it's birthing a whole new type of apologetics. It's apologetics that's actually quite easy. Defending the Bible is the literal inerrant word of God. I may believe that it is. I might. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I don't know. Doesn't matter. It's really hard to defend it as that. But to defend it as a, as, as a collection of metaphysical truths and the wisdom collected of ages and with deep metaphysical truths in it, that's easy to do. That's how Peterson defends. That's easy to do. That's at least what it is, almost inarguably. Try and defend against it. Try and prove that it's not. You can't. That's my claim about the Bible. Not that it's the inerrant word of God, that it is a storehouse of received wisdom going back 2,000 years with deep metaphysical truths in it and, and ancient wisdom. Duh and duh. <laughs> That's really hard. That's really easy to defend. I'll smoke anybody with that. Why? Because it's true. <laughs> it's basically true. It's at least that. Do you see the difference? He's moved, the, he's, moved he's, he's, he's shifted the parameters of the debate. I go into debate, prove Jesus rose from the dead. Ah, ah, feel it in your heart. I can't. I can't do that. You have to have a faith experience for yourself or you're never going to believe me and you have no reason necessarily to believe me. But now I go into debate, defend the truth claims of Christianity. Easy to do. Easy to do. Here's the kicker. Why is it so easy? Jesus doesn't even need to be real to do it. Jesus doesn't need to be God to do it, and he doesn't need to be real to do it. I'll defend it once right now, and I'll be doing it 10,000 times in the future. It's easy to do. Christianity, Jesus, in the image of God, create, God created man in his image. 
So Jesus is the ultimate image of the Godhead, and I, as a Christian, am to, 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 am to aspire to be more Christ-like. Some of the ways that's defined is more compassionate, more merciful, more caring. And I'm supposed to try and be more humble, more like this image of God that is within me. Now that could be true in a deep psychological reality without it being literally true. There's some sort of divine image within me that I can aspire to and I can humble myself and try and be more like it. And, and, and the way that I can, I can do that successfully is to read the stories in the Bible. Read what Jesus did and try and embody the way that he walked and lived in this earth. Does Jesus need to be God for me to do that? No. Does he even need to have existed for me to do that? No. Could be a story of fiction. Doesn't make one iota difference. I can still try and imitate the stories. I can still try and put the messages of the stories into my behavior and walk it out in the real world. And you'll see for yourself the results. You'll see for the self, yourself the results. <clears throat> first, first and foremost, you'll see peace of mind. It will produce, uh, the first thing that the Bible says is that will produce peace in you. Make you more at one with God. Does it matter if there's an actual God? No. Expand the concept of God. Make you more at one with the universe at large. The other thing Peterson keeps doing constantly is redefining the word God in ways that actually are more, more, more useful as a concept to be... To, to be to be defended. It's, it's d the point I'm trying to make, okay? Defending the faith claims of Christianity is almost impossible to do. In order for you to believe the faith claims, you have to have a faith experience. That, that is not something I can do to you. We can't have a conversation and I can intellectually defend, you know, Jesus rose from the dead. That's not something I can defend intellectually, but defending the truth claims of the Bible is absolutely simple. Simple. It is harder to defend against. And defending the truth claims of almost any religion under the same banner. Both Jordan Peterson, I've said this before, I'll say it again because it's worth repeating. Both Jordan Peterson believe that there is such a thing as universal moral intuitions. So now we can examine every single religious holy text and we can decide empirically based on the evidence, based on our knowledge of sociology, based on our knowledge of psychology, and based on our knowledge of normative ethics. Whether the stories embedded in said religion, in their holy book, line up correctly with what are mutually agreed upon universal moral intuitions. If they do, it's a successful religion and it's a better religion. It's a better doghouse. If they don't, it's not as good of a religion. Quite ironic. You say, I don't worship Zeus. Go read the Greek stories. A lot of cool, powerful mis metaphysical lessons in the Greek stories. That's why we still read them today. That's why there are plays that are considered classics based on the Greek myths. They aren't just fantasy stories for no particularly good reason. That's some dingbat atheist made that up somewhere. That's not what religion is. That's not what myth is. That's not what, that's not what narrative fiction is. They are stories designed to enumerate metaphysical realities. Those metaphysical realities need not be actual beings in order for us to understand their perceived truth and their perceived usefulness. This is what Peterson is arguing. This is a powerful argument and it is a successful argument and it's a game changer. Why? Because it's really hard to, it's basically true. Basically true. If, if I wasn't clear in this particular video, it'll be clear in the future. Jordan Peterson defines Christianity in a way in one of these videos as absolutely revolutionary and essentially true. And you don't have to believe Jesus is God to recognize the truth of how he defines it. You don't. I don't, I don't know. That's all for now. I don't know if that made complete and utter crystal clear sense. If it didn't, don't worry about it. I'll make another video on the same on a similar subject. It's a, I promise you. I promise you it's the beginning of a game-changing thing. If you look at the history of the decline of religion, it, it goes runs part and parcel with secular rational interpretation of the world. The reason why secular rational interpretations of the world have been winning out for for these many years is that they're essentially true. It's hard to argue against the truth. Evolution is probably true. It's hard to argue against the truth. You can't do it for very long. 
Jordan Peterson has found the truth claims of Christianity and is asserting them. That's why he's up against the biggest, the biggest gun in the atheist community. And he's, did, you tell me who won and who lost. You go watch it for yourself and you tell me. The point is, any idiot, not any idiot, but anybody can do what he does. It's a powerful reassertion of the power of religion right in front of your very eyes. I promise you that's what's coming. I promise you that's what you're seeing. Anywho, that's all for now. Amen.